In this video, I'm gonna be bleeding the brakes on my motorcycle, and the process I'm gonna show you will be exactly the same whether you do this on a bike or a car. Also, come check this out. My bike has a hydraulic clutch, so the process I'm gonna show you can also be used on hydraulic clutch systems as long as the slave cylinder has a bleed valve like this. First, let me show you what you're gonna need. The first thing is a vacuum pump. Now, you don't absolutely need it, you can do without it, but if you're working by yourself, this can make the job a whole lot easier. Only two criticisms. One is the clear cover for the gauge fell off after a little bit, and I've held it on with just a little bit of masking tape, and the rubber grip on one of the handles just kind of slides off as I'm using it. But the product I've linked in the description below is a better version of this by a different brand, and that's not gonna have any of the problems that I just described. Next, we've got a brand new bottle of brake fluid that's been freshly opened, and I've poured some of this fresh brake fluid into a squeeze bottle like this, just to make it easier to fill the reservoir without making a mess. Then we got some really thick high temperature grease. This is by Maxima Racing Oils. You can use other types of grease, but generally the thicker it is, the better, and I'll show you why in just a moment. I've got a container to catch my old brake fluid and to take it to my local collection center. And very importantly, some rubber gloves and safety glasses, and plenty of rags and a water hose to clean up any spills, and a wrench that's just the right size to open and close the bleed valve. Now I've put links in the description below to everything you need. Now they are affiliate links, so if you do use those links to make a purchase, I will get a kickback, so thank you in advance. But even if you don't, that's still okay, because I still appreciate you just watching the video. Step one is to open the brake fluid reservoir, and if the fluid is low, you want to top it up to the max line. I'm going to leave the rubber diaphragm sitting on top to prevent any dust from falling into it. Next, we're going to put a ring of grease around the nozzle of the vacuum pump. So when we put this onto the bleed valve, we're less likely to have air that creeps in in the little gaps between the nozzle and the bleed valve. Without that good seal, you can easily get thrown off. You'll see bubbles in the clear tube even if there's no air in your brake system because it's actually just ambient air creeping into the tube through those gaps between the nozzle and the bleed valve. So we're going to slip our wrench over the bleed valve push our vacuum pump nozzle on top, and we're gonna pump up the vacuum pump to between 10 and 15 PSI. Then you crank the bleed valve open just until you start to see the fluid level drop in the reservoir, and you'll also see the pressure dropping on the vacuum pump gauge. Reference, that's usually about one eighth of a turn. As the vacuum pump is drawing out the brake fluid, there are a few things you wanna pay attention to. First is you wanna make sure that the fluid level in the reservoir never drops below the minimum. If it gets to the minimum level, crank the bleed valve back closed. Then you top up the reservoir to the max line and then go back to bleeding the brakes again. The second thing is you wanna keep your vacuum pump pressure between that 10 to 15 PSI range. So if the pressure drops too low, just give it a few pumps to get it back up into that range. And the third thing is if space allows, you want the clear tube of the vacuum pump to be on an incline from the bleed valve. This is because air is less dense than brake fluid and it's gonna be easier for air to flow upwards inside the tube and it'll be easier for you to see it as well. Quick note, if you have multiple brakes all connected to the same system, so like if you're doing this on a car, you wanna start with the caliper that's furthest from the master cylinder. That's usually gonna be the rear passenger side first, then the rear driver side, then the front passenger side, and finally the front driver side. In the case of my motorcycle, there are two front disc brakes. I've already done the one on the left side, which is the one furthest from the master cylinder. And what I'm showing you now on camera is doing the second one that's on the same side as the master cylinder. All right, so I've done the whole bleed and filled the reservoir cycle a few times, and I don't see air bubbles coming out through the tube anymore. I'm just gonna close the bleed valve, and remember when doing this, you don't have to gorilla strength it. I typically just use one finger halfway up the wrench. And if the fluid stops flowing, that's tight enough. Then you just pull off the nozzle, and if it's too tight, you can release some of the pressure in the vacuum pump using this pressure release button. Quickly wipe off a little bit of spilt brake fluid, then fill the reservoir back up to the max line and put the cover back on. And you wanna give the brake lever, or if it's in your car, your brake pedal, a few full pumps. It's gonna feel really soft at first, and then with the second and third pumps, it's gonna to start to firm up. Now, if you do that and it still feels soft, it might be that you're not exercising the master cylinder through its full range of motion in which case you might need to adjust your lever or brake pedal. In my case, it was just the brake light switch that was interfering a little bit with my lever stroke. So I just unscrewed the switch, allowed my brake lever to move through its full range of motion, and the lever firmed up right away. Then I can just put the switch back in, and my bike's all ready to go. Finally, I just gotta tidy up my workspace, put everything away, and I'm gonna take my bike for a ride. 